All right, welcome everyone to Tips from the Trenches. This is our part two to a webinar we did on the 9th of September featuring students talking about what's working and what isn't. And the previous webinar featured three high school students. Today's webinar is going to feature several middle school students. So we're very excited to have them with us. I'm going to ask that everyone, uh, I'm going to stop sharing in just a second here. We'll ask everyone to turn on their cameras and we can introduce everyone. Let's see if we can get to my slide here. So I'm Christine Jones, Associate Director of Global Literacy at Benetech. And joining me today are two live panelists and then I'll be sharing some pre-recorded comments by two young boys in New York, uh, Hayden and Brady. You'll meet them in a little bit in a video clip. And then I'll be sharing some written comments from a young young woman named Rebecca, who's also from New York, and uh, she's in seventh grade. So we've got a nice selection of, of content for you today. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen so we can all turn on our video and so we can introduce our panel. Okay, I see Emery, there's Bella. Wonderful. It's great to have you both. Uh, so let's go ahead and start out with some introductions uh, and we'll we'll stick to alphabetical order. So we'll go Bella and Emery pretty much for every question. So Bella, why don't you start us off and introduce yourself. Tell us your name, what grade you're in and where you go to school. And if you can also introduce your mom, that'd be great. So I'm Bella, I'm in eighth grade. I am 13, I'll be 14 in December and uh, this is my mom. <laughs> and, you, and, and your mom's name is? Misty. <laughs> Misty. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you, Bella. And where do you go to school? Uh, I go to school at Timber Springs Middle School. Okay, In wonderful. Florida. In Florida. Yeah. Right. Okay, great. Good to have you. Emery, please introduce mm -hmm. yourself. Hello, I am Emery. This is my mom, Randy. And I'm in eighth grade. Um, I'm 13. I'm going to be 14 in January. And I go to school at Jackson Technology Center. All right. In the great state of Texas, right? Wonderful. All right. Excellent. And when we get to the video clip of the boys, they'll introduce themselves then. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Grace, uh, the person who wrote in uh, some comments. So we'll get to that as well. But uh, first, I want to find out, so I know you're both back in school now in, in different forms, and uh, leading up to the beginning of school, how are you feeling? How are you, uh, what were you feeling about going back to school? Uh, Bella, do you want to start out? Sure. I was feeling kind of nervous because I wasn't sure how this is going to work, and a bit confused, I gotta say. But, I mean, it wasn't that bad, and we've worked out some kinks so okay so good good and emory how about you how are you feeling leading up to it i was kind of nervous but overall i was just kind of i don't know dreading it like i didn't want to go back i didn't want to have all the struggle of like all the new things we had to do to in order to go to school yeah, yeah, I can understand that. I remember you saying in the spring, Emery, that there were some things about the online learning and, you know, learning at home that were working out pretty well for you. So I can understand why the coming of the new year would uh, bring some some trepidation for you. So uh, let me let me ask you both what your what your learning situation is, what's your school district doing about learning and how are you how are you learning this semester? And then you can tell me a little bit about how's it, how it's going so far. Well, I'm doing launch ed at home. It's actually going pretty well so far. Um, we've been kind of learning through, uh, what's it called? It's called Big Blue Button. And it's a type of conference app. It's kind of like Zoom, except we use it on the computer. And I use my screen reader, JAWS, for to navigate it. Excellent. Okay. So you're learning completely online, I think you told me, right? You're not uh, going yeah. to any classes at all. Completely virtual. Completely virtual. Okay. 
Great. And Emery, tell me a little bit about your situation. So our school is doing kind of an online in-person thing. I'm going in person and we use Canvas for a lot of our um, online work. And it's I, I think it's going pretty well because the school isn't that crowded anymore because used to there were a lot of people there and it was just so full of students and teachers. So I think it's going okay for now. I'm sure something will like go wrong. <laughs> Especially well, like we hope not. But... Like when we have to do like big tests, you know? I feel like something is just gonna mess up. So you're going to classes, I think I, I understood you to say, right? And you're going mm -hmm. five five days a week? Yes. And so you're saying that there are fewer students at school because some students have chosen to learn online only. They're still learning online. She's just in the building with her computer. Oh, okay, so the classes are being taught still over Zoom for everybody. You're just in the classroom doing your during your online classes. In Pretty the classroom. much, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so far it's working out okay for you though? Yes. Good, good. Um, so how is your school doing things differently, your school or district doing things differently than they did in the spring? Huh. Honestly, I feel like everyone was in classrooms then. And now I know my teachers are doing, she has a lot of students online, but as I'm sure it's with the case with Avery School too, we have some kids in the classrooms, so they do a lot of the stuff online. Everything's almost virtual, except that there's students in the classroom and then you have the students online. So that's definitely different. Also in the, in the spring, it was um, only a couple of teachers, well, a few of Bella's teachers did um, some online teaching. Like there was a few like uh, pre-recorded videos and it was kind of self-paced in that regard, ex except for science. Yeah. Science, there, every day there was a, a Zoom meeting. Yeah. And that's different this fall, you're saying? Yes. Yeah. So now this, now this year, they have to um, sit through the bell schedule. Yeah. So she's at her laptop from 9.30 to 4, 4 p.m. every day. So you're learning almost completely synch synchronously, I think is the term for that, right? So yeah, eight, you yeah. know basically what you would do during your school day, except it's on the computer. Right, okay. And you're saying in the spring, there was more asynchronous learning where you were, you were given videos and things to watch that you could watch pretty much any time. So your yeah. schedule was perhaps a little bit less uh, structured and rigid. So do you have a preference between those two scenarios? Did you like it better in the spring when you could do your school kind of any time or do you like it better now? Huh, I'm not really sure. And I'm not sure if it made that much of a difference to me because we basically did stuff in the morning anyways. Um, so it was basically the same times that I would do my classes. Um, okay, excellent, thank you. Emery, how about for you? Um, I forgot what the question was. What's your school or district doing differently okay. than yeah, they did in the, um, in, the, in the spring? So obviously there's like a lot of people online and like very few people in the school. And so we started using um, Canvas which is new for us this year. And none of the teachers know how to do it. So mm -hmm. that's a problem. It kind of sucks, but it's <laughs> fine. We're, we're straightening it out. <laughs> Are you? I don't know. So you're all yeah. learning that tool together, Canvas. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and so the district is pretty much the same, but except for those few things, which is kind of a big change, I feel like, because 
like we haven't done anything like this like in the what nine eight years i've been in school how many years what you eight? haven't done anything like online no learning? no yeah, it's a new experience for everybody, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So how about your teachers? What are your, your particular teachers doing that's that's working well? And what are they doing that might be making things a little more difficult? <laughs> Bella, Bella, why don't you start? <laughs> I'm sorry, I kind of spaced out there for a second. Okay, so <laughs> um, they are, I don't know. My science teacher, I gotta say, he's great about that. He really, um, he puts a lot of alt text since I use my screen reader, especially with slides and everything. And for my teachers, I have a shared folder. So they put assignments in there for me so I know where to look and they tell me. That's very helpful. Um, I use a lot of Google Docs, so they have to, Sometimes they have to convert things into Google Docs for me. Um, as for things that are difficult, I'm not sure. I gotta say there are some things that I found that I can't use and uh, uploading, uh, especially PDFs into links and stuff that they send through email that um, is a bit time consuming. But other than that, I can't really think of anything. Okay, those are some great points that you made that sometimes the, the content that you're getting in, in PDF or links in an email is not very accessible for you, right? Is that what you're saying? Yes. And then you're saying you use a lot of Google Docs. Do you use your screen reader with the, with Google Docs? Um, like sometimes I do, but my Bronote is kind of my go-to device, so I basically just look at it up there. So you use your Braille note to read Google Docs? Mm-hmm. Very nice. Okay, good. Uh, Emery, what are your teachers doing that's working and what are they doing that's not working? I have a feeling you have a lot to say about this. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> Some teachers, they're fine. They're doing everything good and great. Like my science teacher, he's doing fine. He knows how to post the stuff in the, in the canvas. And if something doesn't work, we just tell him and he straightens it out in like two minutes. Other teachers, like my English teacher, don't know what they're doing and just like post random things in Canvas. Like we were writing a story in English and she's just like, okay, like go do your own notes. I'm just like, if you would have like an assignment somewhere for this where I could like put this and save it, that would be helpful just so I have the assignment in there when I'm ready to submit this. So yeah, some teachers are fine. Other teachers don't know what they're doing, which is understandable. But like, there's so many things you can do to figure it out. Like you can ask one of your students, you can ask another teacher who figured it out. You can even like get a group of teachers together and do a meeting about how to work Canvas. But some teachers just, oh gosh. So it's been a big kind of a transition, I think, for everyone. And it sounds like uh, it, there's a big learning curve yeah. for some of these things. And you know, everybody has to be. That are difficult are if the teacher gives a verbal assignment that's not posted anywhere. I don't know mm -hmm. if she hasn't done the assignment because there's not an assignment. And I won't remember to do it. And if you post things in the chat, especially information or notes, mm -hmm. the chat box is this big. So getting that into a form you can keep takes a lot of effort. And when class is over, that disappears. So whatever information was posted there is gone. That's not helpful either. Yeah, these are great tips. And we're going to get into a whole section of where you can give tips for your teachers, uh, teach your teachers and just teachers in general. Uh, so those are those are great things to remember, and and obviously, like I said, this is uh, this is a time of learning for everyone, right? We're all doing something we've never done before, so it's uh, it's challenging for everyone. So how about for you guys personally? How are you approaching the school year uh, in a way that will help you succeed? Bella, you want to start? Um, I definitely have emailed and I've talked to my teachers more. I mean, I'm getting better at that, definitely. 
um, how am I approaching it differently so that it's working for me? Uh, yeah, I think that's... Your mom can still math classes. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. My mom is learning geometry with me. <laughs> that, yeah. 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 Yes, it's very interesting, but she is very, very helpful. Good grief, I don't know where I'd be. Uh, so... That's so I think that's that's great, and that's been a common theme that we've heard a lot that uh, parents have gotten very very involved in their kids' education these past few months, or the end of part of end of last year and the beginning of, of this new school year, and uh, yeah, a lot of them probably feel like they're going back to school and learning all over again. So <laughs> kind of hard. Yeah. Emery, how about Emery? How about for you? How are you approaching this school year? I am trying, like, I, I'm, it's the beginning of the year. It's like the third, like, seventh week. I, I'm trying. And I feel like it hasn't gotten to the point where it's really, like, a lot, like, buckle down and, like, things need to get done and whatever. But, like, we all can feel it, like, like even the teachers it's just a lot of to to take in for like all the students and the teachers to have to get in the meetings and the, for the teachers to set up the work in Zoom, in canvas and it's just a lot of work for all of us so i feel like we can all like we're all really like stressed i feel like i don't know but it's the beginning of the year so as like as I think the year goes on, we're going to get to a point where it's okay, and then we're going to keep going, and it's going to get chaotic again. Maybe so, but I think you guys are all going to get the hang of it. Uh, you guys are pretty pretty dedicated students, so I'm sure you're going to do great, and you've got a good support system, both of you there at home. Uh, let's move into a segment where we'll talk a little bit about technology, the technology tools that you're using, and how those are helping you, and Bella, are you ready to start us off showing us a couple of different things that you're doing there? Yep, will do. Okay, so, all right. This is my brown note, and I'm not sure about how this is gonna go, um, but it's basically, it's an Android device. It's kind of like a laptop or a iPad, and it has the access to the internet which that's great. So it basically has, yeah, I know. I'm just, it, it's frozen. Uh, so then you have a screen here and I'm gonna show that to you. So you have this screen and I'm actually, I'm gonna go to here. I'm gonna go here. And what I see, it's loading now, but so here we have a screen and it shows exactly what I'm looking at. And below the screen is a refreshable braille display. So I'm actually gonna click. I have a book I was reading here. And so I was reading this book and every single time that you click on a new line, it refreshes the braille. So this is definitely a really helpful tool because I've had more than one occasion where I kind of got stuck. So I needed someone to look at this, look at the screen and see where I was and help me get to where I wanted to go. So this is definitely a tool that I've been using. Um, Can you demonstrate reading reading your book for us for just yeah. a line or two and, and read uh, it out loud? Out loud? Yes, please. Okay. All right, so long ago, I think. So long ago, they lived and died, and they, like grandfather, will never come back. Greedy, I read the second poem, too. I read the words of both poems over again several times until I hear the sharp snap of a stick near me. Quickly, I folded up the paper and put it away. Okay, that's great. Thank you. That's lovely. What, what book is that you're, that you're reading? Oh, um, I've kind of already finished this book, but it's a book that I need for my language arts class, and it's called Matched by Ali Condi. It's a really good book. 
Nice. And did you get it from Bookshare? I did indeed. You did indeed. Good. So you were able to access it from Bookshare, download it, and read it on your refreshable Braille yeah. device. I have to Wonderful. go through another app called the Easy Reader on my Braille note. But yes, yep. I did it from Bookshare. Nice. Nice. Excellent. So that's great. And I remember you saying when we were kind of talking through some of this yesterday that the screen is beneficial mostly for others around you, like your mom, if you, like you said, you get stuck, she's able to help, help assess maybe what the problem is or what, what you need to do to get back on track, right? Mm -hmm. Great. And then I think yesterday too, you were talking about some other tools you guys have been using for learning at home. You want to talk about those? Yes. As soon as I get this. Okay. So I have to find. Oh, okay. thank you. Okay. So well, you, you, can, you, have to show how you, you want me to let's okay. explain what you have? Okay. So I have a clipboard here, and I don't think you can really see that, but it's beneath. It's a hard surface, and then I put we put a piece of foam there. And then we have a braille piece of paper that would go in the braille writer. It's basically like a piece of cardstock almost, except a bit thicker, I think. And I have a sewing tracing tool. It kind of has like teeth on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. This really is sharp. So then when I push it down on the paper with the foam beneath it, and I'm just going to... I'm gonna make a like a line or something. Okay. That was actually relatively straight. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> That's a shocker. Okay. Um, then on the other side, it gives you a tactile line. So I use it mostly for geometry, especially because we try to recreate the angles and everything. Since I can't see it, but my mom can, and she's going to geometry with me now, uh, we make the angles and stuff that's on the screen because, and most of the stuff, it's all visual, especially. So this is what we've been using. And so you you make the angles so that you can, then you can feel them with your fingers. You can feel yeah. the angle to try to understand, you know, what a right angle is or whatever yeah. the angle is that you're learning about from Especially geometry. Because also we've been getting into copying angles and bisecting, yeah, bisecting angles and lines. So that's definitely useful to that. Uh, and then, and I love graph paper. Graph paper is so helpful. So I've been using graph paper and wiki sticks. And what we do, we make the coordinate plane. And yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, but you make the coordinate plane and you have the wiki sticks and everything. That's awesome. Um, so what I do is, especially for now, for geometry, we'd have the equation and then I'd have to pull out the points. And since sometimes I can't see what the points are and everything, um, my mom would help me, uh, especially make this. So that I am, I know what I'm looking at. I'm like, otherwise, I get completely lost. So having it in a tactile form is what helps you to be able to understand the concept and learn yes. the, the principle. Because yeah. now, I mean, we have to make our own graphics. Because first of all, I'm not the only Braille student that the Brailleists are making Braille for. And now, with everything going on, we have a two-week turnaround time. So by the time that they get the graphics ready and I have the Braille, it's already two weeks behind. So we make our own graphics. So you're improvising to be able to yes. stay on top of yeah. your schoolwork. Yep. That's great. Well, good for you. Good for you for, uh, it seems like great teamwork going on there at home. Oh. It's wonderful. And oh, you have a, something else to show us, right? I do. I do indeed. Yes. Well, my mom, I'm just going to say this, is a crafting genius. They offered her, they should have said, uh, my science teacher told her that they should offer her a job. But I used this graph, it's called an HR diagram, and she made it. 
it was all her, except I grilled the bottom. Uh, and this is what I used for science. And it came in so helpful because he didn't have anything. He's just like, I don't know what we're going to do here. Because it was a slide presentation and it was on the computer. So she made this. And goodness only knows how. A hot glue gun. Hot glue gun? Yeah. Oh, you get scared with a hot glue gun. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's very, very helpful. It's all tactile. And this is what I use to actually be able to understand what on earth is happening here. Great. All right. So, so far with all of these tools and other tools that you might have at home, do you feel like you're keep, are you staying on top of your schoolwork? Um, yeah, mostly. And how far into the school year are you? About six or seven weeks, yeah. I think. We started August 10th. Well, we started, well, August 10th was the first day of school. Yeah. Except on the 21st. Yeah, August 10th. We'll mm -hmm. go with that. Well, good for you. That's terrific. Thank you for sharing all of that. I, I loved, uh, loved seeing that. Emery, you want to show us what you're doing? Hello. Um, you're going to do speech to text first? Or? So I have ADD, which makes it really hard for, I can't, I can't type as fast as my brain can think. I wish I could, but that would involve going at the speed of light. So um, I use speech to text on my Chromebook. So this is some notes I was doing for um, my book. So it was like an outline I was using. I can use this little microphone down here. I think that's it. No, wait, that's it. I can use it and like whatever I say into it, it'll make it a sentence. So. Uh, so you just press a button and you speak into it and it composes what you're saying. Yes. Right? I thought you used the key the magnify. I thought she used the keystroke magnifying glass D yeah. and it'll beep and you talk. Yeah. And when you pause, it'll, it'll beep again. Yeah. There's, she has two, she has an extension and then the built-in accessibility oh, yeah. is on. It worked when I was talking about, if you can see it down there. Yeah. So what you were just saying got recorded. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you do you use that to compose your papers, like when you need to write papers or you need yes. to answer answer homework assignments and things. Good. Okay. Well, when an assignment is really long, I like to use it because when I'm writing the um, long papers, I can I can be typing about something I thought a while while like a um like a couple thoughts ago is what I was trying to say. Um, and so it can, it's helpful. So I can just talk at, as fast as my brain is thinking. So, yeah, it also helps with doing charts. Very nice. And then how about for reading? You want to tell us how you're reading? So I have um, Voice, stream reader. Voice stream reader with Bookshare. So you, I can um, add, if I have like notes that I want to read that we need to like study, I can put them in to, so I can go to my drive and I can put the file into VoiceStream and it can read it to me. So I can get the notes really like solid into my mind we've done that with vocabulary and it helps a ton it's way more effective than making note cards for her can you do you have a book there handy that you could bring up and show on your uh, voice stream reader app i'm reading harry potter and the deathly hallows Hold it up. right now so that's what it looks like and so you can change like settings on it so that you can make it how you want to see um how fast you want to read and what the size and font and um colors, colors of the the um, 
text. Do you want to have, go ahead and have the book read and just put, put it up to the screen and have it read a little bit? It's not here? Oh, it, it's fine. Oh, it could still be here, but under counter enchantments, said Hermione, charms to prevent it being summoned magically, you know, like Vold- it's, not or, it's not working. <laughs> it's the curse of demonstrating it on a webinar. That's <laughs> just, just what happens. I don't know what it's saying and pops along and it's not popping. Yeah. Somebody oh, had searched uh, for them. Oh well. Okay. Okay. We got the we got the journal idea. So well, that's cool. Very good. So the, so yeah. So how does that help you with your reading? Uh, reading well, reading your books me, that way. A lot of teachers ask us to make notes, and for me, making notes doesn't do anything because I'll just be copying one thing from a uh, one page to another page and it won't get into my mind. So I can take the document of notes of um, the paragraph that we're supposed to be taking notes on and I can add it into voice stream so that I can listen to it and then make mental notes and then write down notes um, for whatever we were doing and turn it into the teacher so that it makes it easier to get information into my brain um, so I can do better because reading like after a long day of school reading a paragraph and taking notes on it it's gonna do nothing <laughs> so right so the the voice dream reader app uh you said that what you like about it is that it highlights the words as you you go along and uh, you can read your book share book that way and so you're seeing, you're hearing it, and you're also seeing the words, and you're able to focus on the comprehension more than the decoding of the word, right? Asked me once. There it goes. There we go. Books. Okay. So it's highlighting the line and the word. And the word, right. Yeah, good, good. And do you feel, Emery, that that helps you with your comprehension? Helps you yes. understand it better when you read that way? Yes. Great. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's really, um, really neat to see how you're, again, you know, using the tools at, at hand to, uh, to make it work for you. I'm going to quickly read uh, an excerpt from um, the comments that I got from Grace, uh, a young uh, woman who's in seventh grade in New York, about what she uses for technology. And then I'm going to show the clip, uh, just a very brief clip of a young boy named Hayden. Uh, showing um, what he finds helpful in terms of his, um, his uh, technology. <clears throat> so Grace says, I use my agenda, pens and pencils, folders and binders, my iPad and my computer. I use Zoom meetings with my Braille teacher and I have my own Brailler to work on. My Braille teacher would send me Braille pages in the mail to read and work on. My agenda helps me stay organized with stuff in my time. So it sounds like uh, Grace is making use of a lot of different tools. And let me go ahead and, and share my screen. I'm gonna um, bring up a video to, uh, yeah, to share with you and remind you, all of those of you who are attending and watching the webinar today, if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A box uh, so we can answer them in a little bit. So the boys are gonna introduce themselves and then Hayden's gonna tell us one thing that's helping him uh, in terms of his technology and then I'll stop the video because we'll come back to it in a little bit when they're ready to make some other comments. My name is Hayden and I am going to sixth grade Clarence Middle School and I am 11 years old. I am Brady and I'm, I'm in Clarence Middle School. I am going to eighth grade and I am 13 years old. What worked for me best is Reading online. On the surface, things didn't look all that different. The big house was still there with its blue gabled roof and its wraparound porch. That was helpful. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. So uh, that was Hayden and his brother Brady. And Hayden was saying he likes reading online. And actually, he's using Bookshare Web Reader. He happened to mention to me that he was reading the Percy Jackson series, the um, Sea God. See God, something. I can't remember now what the title is, but God he's reading the, the what? The Gods the of Olympus. 
No, the monsters one, the um, oh, sea monsters. The sea of monsters. Yes, yeah, sea of monsters. So thank you. So he's reading that. So that's the book that was up in Bookshare Web Reader, and it also highlights the words uh, as it's reading. So he's able to follow along with the highlighted words, which uh, he's saying really helps him. He's going to talk more about that a little bit later in the video. So, all right, great. Um, so let's jump in now as far as advice and um, advice for teachers. Uh, Bella, what advice do you have for teachers as this new year starts? Uh, and then I'm uh, going to tell you about Grace's advice, but go ahead. Okay. Um, for teachers, I just say, um, maybe keep an open mind and try to be flexible because you know there's a lot of kinks with technology that's definitely true um i would say maybe definitely try to have a good communication with your student and with the parents because that is definitely going to come in handy and if things don't work out i think it's a really good idea to have a backup plan because in my experience, things have not worked out well, and then we haven't had a backup plan, and it was kind of chaotic. Um, but I think that's really it. Just really good communication, try to be flexible, and just keep an open mind. Excellent. Uh, Emery, I'm going to come back to you in a second. I'm going to share Grace's advice that she wrote in to me, and also I'm going to share the video of Hayden and Brady uh, sharing their advice for teachers, and then I'll come back to you at the end. So Grace said, don't be wishy-washy. It's not fair to other kids if we do our work, and then the teachers say, well, since we didn't have all the work, you can turn it in next week. I worked hard to get it done, so should they, and make sure the work is posted early so I can get my stuff done before bedtime. <laughs> so that's her advice for teachers, and let me uh, bring up the video. Uh, good advice, huh? Let me bring up the video again, and the boys have some advice for teachers, too. So this is um, Brady starting out here. It's kind of just like it was like when they put like the homework and like upcoming, like, like so when you when you see it and like you can go to the calendar and you can see the stuff where, where it's like do because like some teachers d didn't do that. So you, so like sometimes you don't know exactly when it's because like when it's not on there, I it feels like they don't give they're not giving you that much stuff. So like when they put in the calendar, so you can see, so you can go in the calendar. So like it's like an agenda for us. I would say. So Brady is saying that it really helps if teachers put uh, information in the uh, online tool that they're using, as far as a calendar or an agenda that when, uh, when teachers don't do that, then they don't necessarily know about it, and that, that creates some, some stress, it sounds like. Hey, if your students like have trouble reading, I would like give them a choice to read from a book or read from a computer. Yeah, because uh, I do that, and it's really helpful for me. So if a student gets behind, so you got to tell them, and if, the, if they're still getting on behind, you really can't, like, stop. Like, if they get behind a lot, like, you just give them a bad grade. You say, oh, you get a zero at that. So students know that they have to finish that before that time. Because, like, during quarantine, you just didn't have, like, a total due date. I think it just has to be a specific, like, that time. And then that's when you get a zero if you don't finish by then. So Brady's comment there is a lot similar, is very similar to Grace's comment when she said, don't be wishy-washy. You know, she's saying, and Brady's saying, set definitive dates for due dates and stick to them and uh, make sure the kids know that that's, you know, what they're going to have to do. So I thought that was very good advice as well. Bella, did you have one more thing you want to say? Yes, if you wouldn't mind me adding, I would just say, be try to be very descriptive, especially if someone is visually impaired or blind, because if you just say, okay, this is the picture, or like, look over there, or this is this, that that's not helpful at all, because I can't see what you're doing. So it'd be very nice if you guys were very descriptive. Great advice. Great advice. Thank you, Bella. Okay, Emery, go for it. You said you shared some things earlier, but what advice, other advice would you like to offer teachers? So 
um, Brady said about the due dates, he's like, just have a strict time. I would um, not do that for um, a couple of kids. Like for certain people getting an assignment turned in at like what a specific time is not going to be enough time for them to get it done with what they have to like some kids need extended time yeah some kids need extended time is what i'm trying to say but i understand what he means by um if like i understand what he means when he says have um certain times it it's done because some students are just going to be like, oh, I'll get it to you and never get it to them. But um, yeah. And um, when teachers give assignments, um, they need to um, put it in Canvas because some teachers will just give you verbal assignments that you need to do and then no have zero context. And so it would be really helpful if teachers could please try and get everything set in the Canvas. Like, I know you have a lot of stuff to do, but like, please try and get your, all of your um, words out on the document before you post it. Directions. Directions, yeah, thank you, I forgot the word. Yeah, so just, just being thorough is what you're saying and giving you all the information up front that you find that helpful. Yep. <clears throat> Good. And I think that uh, everybody will get a little bit better about that as time as time goes on here. So, um, okay, great. Well, we're going to move on now and ask about your advice for parents. Uh, you each have a very supportive mom sitting next to you and uh, that's uh, a great gift. And uh, we know that many parents out there too are pulling their hair out, trying to juggle everything mm -hmm. from work and uh, everything that's going on. So maybe uh, you each and also your moms can share any advice that uh, that you have for parents. And I've got some tips from Hayden and Brady and also from Grace to share too. So why don't we start, Bella, why don't we start with you and then I'll share Grace's tips and Hayden and, video, and Brady's video for parents and then uh, come back to you, Emery. So Bella, what advice do you have for parents? Well, I definitely don't want people ripping their hair out. So I'd say try not to stress too much. Um, and also, I guess, be aware that things definitely can go wrong. Not that I'm saying they will. I'm just saying that they can. And also, I think it's very, very helpful for you to actually know what your child needs. Like my mom, whenever I get really freaked out, I get really nervous about stuff and due dates and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to fail. I can't do this. I can't do this. My mom always reminds me that I have extended time and my teachers literally cannot deny me my extended time. So if I need it, I can use it. So she definitely knows my needs and I think that's really helpful. Misty, do you have anything to add? Um, hmm. I don't know. I, I think just... Uh, just being aware of what's going on and um, just trying to be as helpful as, as you can for the for your student or your child. Um, <clears throat> I always try and reassure Bella to, for her, like she said, not to stress out with due dates and you know help her as much as I can with what she needs help with, whether it's you know spell checking or. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, spell checking. <laughs> yes, I'm the official spell checker. She is. <laughs> She's my grammar person. <laughs> okay, great. Like That's awesome. Dad. That's great advice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both. So Grace, what Grace had to say to parents is help your kids out if they ask for it and need it. But if they don't really need help, then let them do it on their own. It's up to the kids to do the work and keep up with their schedule. It's the only way they will learn. And actually, um, Brady has something similar to say. Let me bring up that video one more time here or actually second to last time. Help your kid, kid when they need it. Not don't just say come up and just start helping them if they don't need it. But but check on them, see if they need help. Check and see if anything's like late or anything. Because some sometimes I don't check on it because I forget about it, so I just just don't do it. And like check the portal, 
so like they know what's late. My thing I got for students. Okay. okay. So that's next. He's going to give his advice for students. So we'll come back to that. Um, but um, uh, let's see. Anything? Emery, go ahead. What advice do you have for for parents? Ja, um, for me, when I get home, I the first thing I want to do is just like go put on pajamas and just sleep Absolutely. and not do not 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 do anything. But um, I it's really helpful when you get your kids like. You want to have a connection to your kids so that you, if something goes wrong, you can fix it. Because, like, all the time, I forget about work I need to do, and my mom's just going to be like, oh, you haven't done this, or you haven't done this. I'm really bad about checking on it, but I'm glad she she's reminding me. And don't stress out a lot. It's it's helpful for your kid to see that you think it's gonna it's gonna be okay, so they can just relax and just be like, oh, it's fine, I can do this. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, don't don't like you oh, want to be in your kid's life enough to where they can, if they need you, they can ask for your help. Okay, good. Um, Brandy, anything to add there? Yeah, she definitely needs a break when she comes home from school. Um, being in contact with the teachers, I think is helpful. I'm not sure the teachers think it's helpful, but <laughs> I need to know like what's going on and how can we help and parents just put out there, you know, we've been dyslexic for a long time. If you have questions, we can help you know how to accommodate the work. It's not complicated. Just Shorten assignments, just odds and evens. It's sometimes it's just that simple. All right, so how about for other students? Uh, why don't we start with uh, Bella? What advice do you have for other students as, it's new, as the school year starts? And then we're gonna get to some questions from the attendees. Uh, well, my advice to students is kind of similar to uh, what I'd give to parents. It's just, I know I have, I personally have a problem with stress. I get really, really stressed out just by school. So I would say try not to get stressed out that much because, first of all, I would also know my IEP goal, uh, not goals, but like accommodations. So definitely I have extended time. I have double time for tests, so I don't need to worry about that too much. And I would, I'm allowed to do odds or evens. So I just know my accommodations. I would definitely try to be self-advocate. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I can't get that word right. But um, self-advocate. Um, definitely talk to your teachers and, I don't know, try to bring them up to speed. If they ask questions, try to answer them the best you can. But definitely don't stress. Okay, excellent advice. Thank you, Bella. I'm going to read Grace's advice for other students and then show briefly the clip of Brady giving some advice and then we'll come back to Emery and then we'll take some questions. So Grace had this to say. She said, don't be a jerk. When the teacher has a Zoom meeting, don't act up and take time away from the class. Take your time and do your work right. Don't rush through it just to be able to watch TV. Just because we have to do things differently doesn't mean that we don't have to do them right. So I thought that was actually pretty powerful. And I'm gonna share um, Brady's advice for students now. The thing I got for students is that if you know something you have, and don't save it to like the, the last, last second. the last seconds. Do try to do it like right away. So like if it's due next week, try to do it like in the first week. Or like if you have if you have lots of stuff that week, start like going on it when you have time. Just just start on it so you have the idea of what to do. So like the next week you have more idea of what to do. Okay, so Brady's basically saying break it into chunks and take it, you know, a little bit at a time and uh, don't procrastinate was kind of the basic idea there. But Emery, mm -hmm. what about you? What advice do you have for students? Um, 
Self-advocate is a big one for me because I suck at it. <laughs> there have been a multiple occasions where I have um, not spoken up for myself and it kind of backfired. So self-advocate is important. Uh, just uh, another thing with the self-advocate, just don't, don't be a jerk. There's one thing, it's, it's called being self-advocating and being a jerk. Don't. Don't cross the line, okay? Yeah. There's, there's a line there. Don't cross it. Um, and um, for your work, try, if it helps, write things down. If it helps, add things like in your notes on your phone. Um, have remind set. Put like sticky notes on your backpack or something. I don't know. Like if writing it down helps or getting something to remind you helps, then do it. Um, and also... Like Brady said, don't put off your work till the last second because it, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be an A grade. And like, it's roughly going to be a B if you put it off till the last second. And if you get your work done, you'll have more time to do whatever, like to watch TV or play video games or whatever. Then you'll have procrastinating and playing games than doing your good work and playing games. Excellent. Okay, good. Thank you. That's excellent advice you all have for your peers. And now we're going to address some questions. So Bella, a couple of questions came in for you. One is someone wanted to know the name of the device that you use, your, your ah, brushable okay. Braille display. Um, you mean, okay, so it's called a Braille Note Touch, and it, it's the plus version. It's like the, you know, the update, the software update. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is made by Humanware. Okay. Um, Excellent. Thank you. And then the other question for you, Bella, is when you're, the way that your day is structured, when do you get time to work with your TBI? Um, so I have a separate period set um, aside just for my vision period that takes away one of my elective periods, but I have a separate vision period during the school day. You have a special time. Is that every day? That is, yes, that's every day. Every day with your, your TBI, your teacher of the visually impaired. Awesome. Okay, that's super helpful. And somebody wanted to know about the using the, the sewing wheel um, tool. Where did you like guys learn about that? I remember. Oh, I believe um, our vision teacher told us. Uh, Bella's vision teacher had told us about it. It's actually a tool that the Braillists use when they are um, making some of the tactile graphics for the geometry for her. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I think it's an excellent idea, even for kids who are sighted, because the idea of being able to, you know, especially if they're kinesthetic learners and they can feel something, you know, feel the shape of the, the angle, as you said, you know, that can really help with their learning. So it's a really nice trick that you're sharing there. Excellent. All right. Let me look at some other questions here. So let's see, are students using Bookshare for textbook material or physical copies of books? So for your textbooks, what are you guys doing there? I think we can actually download textbooks, but I don't normally use that. We have actually Braille textbooks, and you can't see it, but there's like a whole stack of boxes to my <laughs> right, and it looks like a, a mini jungle gym kind of. Um, just to give you an idea, um, her geometry textbook is seven boxes yes seven boxes seven and boxes brailled, so you get that yeah. in braille yeah uh -huh. okay so do you don't really download your textbooks from bookshare much bella no not much no i download other books but not textbooks okay and emery how about you what, what are you doing about textbooks? okay so um we don't really use textbooks but yes we do have them i've used I'm in home ec and we've used the textbook. They have them online, but if you really needed to, you could download it into um, Voice Stream. I haven't really needed to, but if I ever needed to, I would, I think, because um, they're in sixth grade in English. I love that teacher, by the way. Um, um, he um, said, we, it was a sub one day, and so she read half of the story, and we had to read the other half. Keep in mind, this was one of my last classes of the day. So mm -hmm. I'm my brain is really tired. I don't feel like doing the work anymore, and my next period is banned, which is easy-ish. 
Uh, so, like, I'm sitting there. I, I don't read the story because my brain doesn't process anything. Basically, when I read something, when I'm really tired, it, it, it comes in and goes out. That's how it feels. So did you use technology in the I, She didn't let us take out our technology. Oh, okay. But you could. You could. You could both get your textbooks from Bookshare if you if you wanted to, and if it, um, that was something that your school was using. Third grade when we first started with Bookshare, just to see what was available, and all of the Texas textbooks were there. We just haven't needed them, especially if they're online in Chrome. You can highlight and click the read button. That comes in handy was, too. Um, that was something that I did request that for Bella to be able to download her textbooks onto her Braille note, and it is in her IEP. But huh. um, it seems like. Um, there's always something else that comes up that takes precedent. Um, you know, every day it's like with her vision teacher, it's like, Oh, mm. can we work on this? Or cause Tests. now she has the, um, the algebra EOC coming up and she has to learn the, mm. how to use the talking calculator. Cause you can only yeah. use a certain And then we have device, geometry so. <laughs> tests on top of that. And then we have language arts and we have science and it's just <laughs> like, yeah, why are you throwing this at me? <laughs> So we have a lot, a lot to do, a lot to do, yes. yeah, for sure. Yeah, so one of the um, participants asked a question about being able to get books for themselves from Bookshare rather than go through their teacher. And I think both of you guys have an individual membership uh, in Bookshare, right? Mm -hmm. That um, So the best, uh, what we recommend, the best scenario is where a student is on a school account, but also has a connected uh, individual membership in Bookshare so they can look for their own books, but the, but teachers can also assign books to them. And uh, in a minute, I'll bring up the website where you can find some instructions for how to do that. Uh, let's see. Any students using a graphing calculator that's designed for people who are blind? Bella, you mentioned about needing to use a talking calculator. Yes. Is yes. that a graphing calculator? Um. It's in the basket. It's in the basket. Okay. There. It is. This is it. huge. I don't. I don't. I didn't charge it by the way. Oh. Okay. Okay. This is the calculator that <laughs> she's allowed. It has. Um. It's a talking calculator, but yeah. she can use it for algebra. It's a science, like a scientific calculator. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, just one more question in the Q&A, which is about um, how do you know, do either of you know any students who are hard of hearing and how are they accessing their Zoom classes, for example? Huh. I don't think so. I don't think I know any. And I know that, uh, yeah, there are some there are some tools that are compatible with Zoom that do closed captioning. That's one of the things that we're looking into for these webinars. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not perfect and sometimes like a lot of closed captioning, especially uh, on demand, it, it's not, it can be inaccurate, but, um, but it's certainly better than nothing. So probably something to look for in Zoom. Uh, somebody in the chat says PowerPoint apparently has captioning. Good to know. Yeah, I'll have to look yeah. into that. Uh, let's see. Question for Emery. Do your teachers use interactive notebooks? You're muted. Oh, okay. So we did this once in sixth grade. It sucked so hard. I hated it so much. I hated it so much. I love that teacher so much, but I hated it so much. Okay. So what did you do? That didn't work, so that didn't work I out so well. Anything because I didn't, I, I was dumb and what class was what, it? It's just science. Yeah, what, it's great. What was, what was hard for you about that? So what, was what was difficult? It's difficult because it's all handwritten. You have to follow along to what a teacher is doing. And you can't, it's, it, it, uh, uh, okay. it's all handwritten notes in a notebook. And my brain can't write, write as fast as I read or do anything. My writing is mm, garbage. Uh, like, for dyslexic kids, reading just is useless almost, and writing things down too, kind of. It's teachers, if you have a kid with a learning disability, you need to figure out a way 
to help them because if you're teaching them the way you're teaching them the entire year, they're honestly going to learn 20% of what you're teaching them that year. Um, from a practical standpoint, the interactive notebook could be really, really helpful if it was all computerized and it's 2020, there's no reason for it not to be. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if like if mom could type it up and have it on a device so that the student could speak what needed to be added and then could listen back to the notes because and if you need to have frustrated it, students who aren't learning anything who are doing work to do work aren't going to continue to do that i mean school's not so, not going to keep trying so if it's hard and you're pointless i have something to say that can help for this ask the teacher if there's any way you can get the credit for doing the notebook without actually with like you listening to it and like talking and or like try and find a way you can get credit for doing the notes in a way that it will help you because you're only doing the notes so that you can look back at them later and see it and review them for tests and we all know i we cannot read my handwriting and it honestly notes just don't help it's if i'm writing it down i'm probably not going to look back at it because i i just why i mean use it's kind of just busy work okay so you're saying basically you have to make the interactive notebooks work in the same way that you described earlier where you can you can use uh, voice to text uh, to uh, to compose your thoughts and your responses to questions and you can use text-to-speech to read it so that it's reading out loud and, and highlighting the words as you go. So if they're using those kinds of tools, which are now available pretty widely in a number of different uh, platforms, Google uh, is one where you can use extensions uh, to use both text-to-speech and, and speech-to-text. Uh, you can create something in um, yeah, a platform that's that's has some of those assistive uh, uh, components to it is what you're saying. If so there's ever a problem with a class, just ask your teacher. And if you ask them if um, you can do anything and they say, oh, this is not compatible like that, you can ask your parents to talk to your teacher, which <laughs> is going to be helpful. And if that doesn't work, just, oh, yeah. just don't do the work. I'm joking, okay. but like, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm joking, sorry. Okay. But so so we're going to have to wrap up. We're, we're <laughs> over time. Um, you guys have both been terrific. We really appreciate your, your advice. Um, maybe just any one word, um, one word parting, parting comment uh, for, for everyone, Bella? Uh, one word, possibly one word. Or, uh, or keep it to a couple words. Good luck, have fun, and don't stress. Great advice. Emery, closing thoughts? Be positive. Try not to stress that much. And mm -hmm. just keep your loved ones close. <laughs> People were asking about the reader Emery was using. This is what it looks like in the App Store. It's voice dream instead of voice stream. I'm trying to get the glare off of it. Yep, that's awesome. Thank you. Yes, voice dream reader is a great app and it it's integrates really directly helpful. with Bookshare. Yep. Um, you can log into your Bookshare app, right? Uh, your Bookshare account, right in the app, and download books and and open them up and read them in the ways that work for you. So and that's awesome. Bookshare has everything. There's a new release that they were really excited to read. It wasn't on Learning Ally. It was on Bookshare. <laughs> what, what was the book? Yeah, fine. The sequel to the one and only Ivan just came out. It's called the one and only Bob. If you haven't read the one and only <laughs> Ivan, read it. It's a great book. It I recommend. Great. And have you read the the sequel? The one not yet. Of, I'm get, not I'm yet. I'm into it. I'm trying. Oh. It's I on Bookshare, it. though, huh? Yes, it is. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Well, you both have been. You all all have been terrific and so very helpful. Thank you for your great and honest and raw comments and your helpful suggestions. And just getting a sense of you know how you're doing, and uh, we're going to check back in with you in the in the spring and see uh, how it's going and how things are are coming along for you. But we wish you all the best, and uh, we know that you're just going to do really really well this year, despite all of the uh, very complex challenges everyone's dealing with. So.
hang in there and uh, thanks again for, for being with us today. Appreciate it. Take care and have a great school year, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.